Ladies and gentlemen, this is Vivek. This is the F-22 just lost a dogfight to cheap attack jet. This by the channel Sandbox. Earlier this week, the Philippines Air Force (PAF) announced that one of its F-A-50 light attack jets, F-A-50, which one is this? That homegrown or something like American F-A-50? I don't know. Just managed to score a national kill against America's reigning air superiority champ F-22. Okay, how does that work? I, I don't know. Look, look, man, you. I'm going insane here. All of you tell me F-22 is so untouchable. It's just like nothing can touch it. In untouchable. Okay, and now it's like some uh, you know smaller light Philippines plane shot it down or something in this simulation. Only thing I can think of. It's like sometimes in this, like somebody told me in the past that scenarios like this, where America tries to like tie uh, after it does hands behind its back or something by, you know, uh, removing certain elements from it. I, I don't know. Uh, so whatever reason, so they can see in certain scenarios how it would work or something. So it's not really after it do versus whatever, right? That's why uh, a Rafale probably shot it down. I'm, I'm pretty sure there was also another European plane that shot F-22 down. And same thing here. I'm guessing it's a different scenario with, uh, you know, restricted F-22 thing. Maybe. But we'll see. Uh, Sandbox is a great channel. Uh, you know, I've watched a few videos from it and it's just like very interesting. People tell me this is like really unbiased one. Like not really Wikipedia propaganda shit. It's like he really does his research or something. Which is, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let's do it. Remember, if you like, make sure to subscribe so I know which type of videos to react to more. Check out the links and there's a link in the description. And yeah, let's do it. The Philippines Air Force just revealed that one of their F-A-50 attack jets defeated an American F-22 Raptor in air-to-air -air combat exercises held this past July. They even released this image, apparently captured from the F-A-50's gun camera just before its pilot called out, Fox 2 killed one Raptor on the right turn. And this has obviously already raised a lot of questions about how this $38 million trainer turned multi-role fighter managed to defeat the as much as $350 million F-22 Raptor. And the answer is context, though you may find that's lacking in most discussions about this story, either because people don't understand how military exercises work or because of a fair bit of bias. Just the other day, I posted a video discussing why it's a good thing that we hear about U.S. military platforms and units losing in combat exercises to ally and partner forces. And one of the examples I cited was the 2014 engagement where German Eurofighter Typhoon pilots claimed victories over F-22 Raptors. Of course, those Eurofighter pilots left out how the rules of engagement clearly stacked the deck against the Raptors. and. The Raptors still came out on top more often than they didn't. But Eurofighter driving braggarts notwithstanding, there's good reason to stack the deck in such a way. So let me get this uh, out of 10, 9 times out of 22, 1, but they only need one time so they can claim, oh, we shot down F-22. Obviously, scenarios would be stacked again F-22. You see, the intent behind these exercises is never to just roll in with the superior force and wipe the floor with the competition. Nobody would get anything out of those exercises. So instead, the rules of engagement are usually established in a way that doesn't just even the playing field, but often will put the superior platform at a distinct disadvantage. And there's a lot of value to be had in doing so. Because the truth is, the F-A-50 wouldn't stand much of a chance in a real-world engagement against an F-22 Raptor. The F-A-50 is, at its most basic level, just the Korean Aerospace T-50 Golden Eagle, which is a jet trainer. They just added combat systems to it to make it a pretty economically affordable, multi-role, attack-oriented fighter. The Philippines ordered about a dozen of these aircraft back in 2014, and all things considered, they make for a pretty good bang for your buck. 
They're powered by a single F404 afterburning turbofan engine, the same sort you'd find two of in an F-A-18 Hornet. But because the aircraft is so small, it can achieve speeds potentially as high as Mach 1.5. It has seven hardpoints for a variety of mostly air-to-ground munitions, but it can also carry the AIM-9 Sidewinder. And its onboard radar, which is the Israeli-sourced ELM-2032, is said to be about comparable to the AN-APG-68 found in Korean KF-16s. The F-22 Raptor, on the other hand, isn't just the stealthiest fighter ever to fly to date. It's also powered by a pair of F-119 afterburning turbofan engines with 2D thrust vector control. Each of these engines produce more thrust than the J-58 turbo ramjets that powered the SR-71 Blackbird. And that thrust vector control not only allows for greater maneuverability and handling when flying at a high angle of attack, but also absolutely jaw-dropping maneuverability. But maybe most important of all, the F-22's AN-APG 77V1 active electronically scanned array radar is so powerful that even if the F-22 wasn't stealth, it would still be able to detect and target the F-A-50 from significantly further out. Than yeah. I mean, people, when they see that, it's just like, what the fuck? That's like a trainer-type jet shot on F-22. Why would you spend so much money? Blah, blah, blah. All the, like, you know, sudden, like, insane left-wingers, like, you're already spending too much in military. This is insanity. Why are you doing the next sentence and air dominance and all that? There's a context, man. <laughs> it's just like, first of all, most of, like, F-22, F-35 fights, if done, like, let's just say, against not someone equal, they wouldn't even come close to fighting, right? From the distance, the F-22 would just basically destroy anything, right? Uh, its targeting system, its radar, its stability, everything, you know, and as far as jets go, it's, it can super cruise, right? Like, without afterburners, right? that's the whole point of it. So, stealth remains. Like, if you use afterburners, stealth kind of gets sacrificed. So, combining F-22 to anything like that is just insanity. But basically something like that, look, is there a scenario where any jet can shoot down the best of the best? If you like tie a lot of hands behind the backs, as I say, some bad scenarios, of course, it's like saying, what if I have a shotgun and my enemy had like a, I don't know, like some small knife. Knife is still deadly if like suddenly gets a jump on it or something for whatever reason. Even those reasons probably not gonna happen. It's air, right? And F-22 is gonna know like what is around it all the time because of his radar and everything. And not to mention all the support from the United States Air Force with the a lot of like you know long range radars and things like that. So it's impossible for F-22 to get shot down by something like this. But yeah, then the F-A-50 could detect and target even a non-stealth Raptor. In other words, we're talking about the technological equivalent of David and Goliath. But again, it's important to remember the way the rules of engagement for these exercises are established. There's a reason why there's an A-10 Warthog out there with a Raptor kill marked on the side of its fuselage. It's because training exercises are designed to be exceedingly tough. Now, we don't know this. <laughs> this is equivalent to a kid saying, I punched my dad and I knocked him down. Yeah, sure, sure he did. Yeah, he was pretending. Right, and his hands was behind his back. He wasn't trying to kill you. That's the whole point. This is the same reason why UFC fighters are a Walter weight, right, or a middle weight, spars with his heavyweight, uh, you know, training guy, who fights at heavyweight because heavyweight punch is gonna be a bit, bit harder, right? His whole bone structure of the hand and everything, so he can prepare for somebody much less power than him, right? It's better to do it like that. You need this advantage. You need some overpowered thing. Right? And in this scenario, you need to have like a, you know, a certain things shut off or something for F-22 just to see in what scenarios with all things shut off, how does F-22 work? Basically, can improve things. Specific rules of engagement established for this particular sortie, which is one of 96 flown during the Cape Thunder exercises. But we can glean something about them just by looking at this single photograph. First and foremost, we can see the F-22 Raptor, and it looks 
to be fairly close, which in and of itself tells us that the rules of engagement barred beyond visual range engagements. In other words, the F-22 Raptor was likely not only not allowed to take out the F-A-50 from beyond visual range where its stealth would be most potent, but likely also was not allowed to use its stealth to dictate the terms of the engagement. Even in close quarters fighting, stealth fighters have a distinct advantage because they can sneak around and decide how they want to approach an opponent. But in exercises like this, it's not unheard of for fighters to be started out directly behind Raptors. Now, I can't say that that's what happened here, but it does seem pretty apparent that they started in close quarters. But honestly, who cares about all that? If you zoom in, you'll see that this Raptor still has its drop tanks on. Now, if you're not familiar with drop tanks, they're external fuel tanks carried under the wing of a fighter, just like a bomb or missile, to extend the fighter's fuel range. And they have a seriously negative impact on any fighter carrying them, but particularly on stealth fighters because these drop tanks compromise their stealth profile. But beyond concerns about stealth, drop tanks have such a pronounced impact on maneuverability that any fighter pilot worth their salt immediately drops them the minute a fight breaks out. The fact that this Raptor still has them on board means the rules of engagement dictated that they were not allowed to get rid of them. Now the F-22's drop tanks each carry 600 gallons or 4,000 pounds of fuel. And not only does all that added weight and aerodynamic drag limit top speed, acceleration, and climb rate, but the added inertial resistance of having all that weight under each wing compromises the fighter's ability to roll or conduct sharp turns. See, I don't even think it's all that, right? Like I said, PF-50 is insanely light. So it's gonna be insanely agile. It's light, it's smaller, right? This is like trapping some giant badass guy into like six by six foot room with some like under five foot really skinny guy who's like really fast obviously and just just touching somebody just enough to oh, oh you lose this is the equivalent of that of course skinnier guy is gonna touch the big guy it's not gonna do much damage but still basically something like that oh you have to be in visual range or oh, you have to be do this or oh, you have you can't let go of the fuel and whatever okay and there you go you're in my sight even after like shooting your missiles are you sure you can take down after and do with all the defensive measures and things many things go into play in other words this is the fighter equivalent of flying with one wing tied behind your back. Now, I don't say any of this to dismiss or diminish the incredible accomplishment of this Filipino FA-50 pilot, but it's vital for those of us outside of these exercises looking in to understand the broader context of them. These drills are not meant to serve as an accurate representation of how these two nations would duke it out in the sky. They're meant to provide the personnel involved in them the opportunity to improve. So, did a mm. Philippines Air Force F-A-50 take out an F-22 Raptor in air-to-air -air combat exercises? Yeah, it sure looks that way. Is that something anyone should lose any sleep over? No, absolutely not. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, again, it's like, Real world scenarios are not like octagon, one versus one who would win. There's many elements, like I said. Yeah, F-22 would be supported by US Air Force and all its arsenal of different technology. There is no scenario where something like, you know, F-A-50 or basically any other plane can even get touch F-22. So yeah, that's the thing, you know, uh, F-22 has never been used, right? But if it had been used, there's like many elements would have been behind it. So in future, I don't know, because of Taiwan and things, maybe like J-20 versus F-22 could happen. Yeah, they're saying like they're going to discontinue F-22, but I don't think so, not like that. Even if they create like next generation of air dominance, they're going to still keep F-22. They're going to extend its date, right? Because it, it, it is still untouchable, right? Even if you create the best, you can still use F-22. Why would you use the best newer one now, right? If F-22 can kick anyone's ass, like I'm pretty sure they're going to keep it. Right, they're not just gonna like you know retire it like that. They they might retire if they see if their like Intel says like there is no future conflict coming for any time soon maybe. But if like the like, Taiwan thing, China thing just rises and rises, 
and they think that maybe there'll be like there will be some kind of friction between US and some other power. They are not gonna retire after it too. Right, well, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe and yeah, I'll see you next time.